Hello everyone and welcome back to my complete career run through of Kerbal Space Program 0.23 where we are back with the Lambda 4 tug and the Pi lander for some moon crater hopping. So we are, well we've, we've used some uh, fuel as you can see but I think we still got enough to complete our intended mission to visit a number more number of more craters on the moon, three more, um, and we're aiming for this one I think now. I think we could start our descent right now actually. So we're going aim for this one and then uh, and then this one and then uh, we might have to wait a little while before, I mean we've got lights and all, but we might have to wait a little while before we uh, hit the final crater because I just want to make sure it's in the light. And actually, this one is pretty tenuous. Maybe I should land at this one right now, before it goes completely dark, huh? Yeah, that makes more sense. So I'll 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 aim for this one. I'll uh, skew going in order. All right, we are fully refueled, so let's decouple again. And because landing and docking are like the two most time-consuming things I do in Kerbal Space Program. I really need to manage my time correctly in order to make sure I can get this mission done. Otherwise, uh, I just... And it's it's really annoying because, of course, I cut most of the docking procedure and landing out, so it's not like I'm producing much video by doing it this way, but... Um, but yeah, so I need to be more efficient about it, and hopefully more efficient doesn't mean more dangerous. And... Yep, yeah, okay, let's try that. Mm, right now we're... If we try and uh, make a landing burn, I'm afraid I'm gonna knock that, but let's actually plot it first. Uh, that's too close. So we gotta hit this crater proper. Wow, doesn't look like there's much clearance there though. Might have to aim high and then uh, come down a little bit. Alright. Now let's see what direction this puts us in. Okay, that seems a little bit safer than our previous aim. Oh, that's close enough. All right, back down we go. Lights are on. Let's get the gear down. So uh, Argus pointed out that these aren't the right lights to put down at the bottom. I thought the wide lights would be better for landing, but uh, apparently not. Apparently, it's the spotlights that uh, are better for the landing lights, and. Uh, Though I probably don't mind uh, still using the spotlights for these lights that are illuminating the lander, uh, well, the the actual can, because they still seem to be doing a fine job, and if they are, uh, well, I guess they're tilted a little bit too much in this direction to be very useful for long distance viewing as well. But, but yeah, so I'll have to remember to switch out the lights. The, certainly uh, it's not a good situation with the landing lights because we only got to see the ground uh, see the lights on the ground in the last bit and you know if I could see the lights on the ground hundreds of meters ahead of time then I wouldn't be quite so nervous about landing on something on the dark side so yeah now passing right over the other crater that I had originally targeted. I have to do my descent burn pretty late if I'm going to avoid hitting the lip of the crater. Try to hit this spot here.
Well, it looks like we'll avoid the lip of that crater, so that's fine. Right. Okay, that's us set down on our second crater. Alright, uh, hotkey 2 was the ladders, yes. I did the experiments on this panel, so I do this one this time. Observe the mystery goo. As usual, it's less dense here. Twin craters. Hmm. Science not exactly full here. That's interesting. Seismic data. 80 points. The sensor picks up distant impacts on the surface reflecting along the interior of the crater uh, of the moon. Uh, picks up distant impacts on the surface reflecting along... I don't know about that. Okay. Uh, thermometer. Collected and recorded temperature data at 32 points. Uh, gravity data, alright. After calibration, the sensor is able to detect the interplay of gravity between Kerbin and the Moon. Okay, 80 points, very good. And yeah, yeah, the barometer, right. Okay, so that's our science. Let's have Bill EVA now. So there's twin craters, right? So let's plant that flag. Bill at so oh, at twin craters and the date two of four. Okay, take the surface sample. Particularly high concentration of rare elements. Nice. Now, if only we had a facility to mine such things in Kerbal Space Program. Well, keep that data. EVA report. You, sun, you look up and search the sky for Kerbin. Suddenly you feel very small. 32 points. Okay, well, uh, I always uh, wonder if Kerbin is actually around. Probably not. Okay, um, yep, alright, get back to this. Grab. Up, 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 up. Now, this time, instead of trying to aim for another crater and being all indecisive about it, let's try and uh, rendezvous properly. Yeah, I think we should be able to catch up when it's here. All right. All systems nominal, and let's go. Retracting ladder, retracting gears. We do all have to go up a bit because we're at the bottom of a crater and there's a lot of stuff surrounding it that might get in our way if we try and do things too crazy. So yeah, we're gonna just try and save as much fuel. We'll still rendezvous with it first instead of trying to uh, hop directly into another crater. Let's try and get our apoapsis uh, out to the ascending node here. We do have an inclination issue because obviously we changed our inclination on the way down so I have to make adjustments for that okay that's fine and then I'll add a maneuver here to do everything else inclination change and then orbit and let's see how far off we'll be 
Well, uh, we should still stay on the inside track then. Okay, 0.3 kilometers is fine by me. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a relative velocity issue, but that's not a huge problem. We've got the fuel. Point 0.9 is fine. Our inclination is a little bit dismal though, but uh, all right. Mm. Negative relative velocity towards the target. Okay. And of course, going around the planet makes me deviate from that, but. Oh, it's not too bad on the adjustment that we need to make over here. People do mention Chase Cam to me, and. I'm sort of conditioned not to use it at this point. I think I might actually confuse myself if I start trying. And one of the reasons is that I'm not really looking that much at my craft trying to figure things out. I'm actually use, using the nav ball here. And in that case, uh, the keys mostly remain the same even if I'm uh, in a free camera. So. But I'm sure sometimes I'm I'm mess messing up because I'm just not using the right view. Okay, uh, I think we're going in too fast. Let me change the other one to make sure we're pointing all right. Okay, that's us uh, all back together again, and let's transfer some more fuel. How are we doing? We're not doing too badly. And of course, we're just going to get back to Kerbin anyway, so this is not an interplanetary journey where I have to be too concerned about fuel. Probably want to top up the monopropellant. Well, let's see about the monopropellant. Because it is, if we can get by without topping them up, I don't want to because, yeah, I mean, 75 is fine. Because we're just carrying that weight down and back up again anyway. So might as well not, uh, not fill that up. Alright, so let me take a look at the situation. So we want to hit this crater next. Yeah. And then by that time, hopefully some other crater or... Uh, I think I see something over here that might uh, come on to the light side that we can target. Okay, we're sort of uh, adding electric charge, so I don't want to interrupt that too much. Yeah, let's time up a little bit. Okay, that should be fine. Let's undock again. Switch. Back away. SAS on. And plot for the crater that we want to land in. Well, that's not bad. That'll do. All right. Unfortunately, it's pointing very close to our other craft, so let's be careful about this. Let's actually tilt away from it first, and then tilt back towards our our intended goal afterwards. There we go. Well, 
Looks like Kerbin's got an eclipse the sun, huh? Probably gonna miss that with my luck. I think right around here we need to start doing some business. Where are we? Yeah? Alright. Crater number three, folks. Let's close that hatch. We don't need it. Looks better closed. Now, here I do like to change the camera. Okay, there we go. And uh, I should get gear down. You can sort of see what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to hit this part, but uh, in order to do that, I'm shading a little bit to the north. And, uh... But now we should be able to just follow our current vector. Also, I'm tilting up a bit in order to make sure that I do not... Uh, as I kill my horizontal velocity, I don't actually bring that any closer. In which case, it'll start hitting these craters over here. So uh, so even though I'm uh, slowing down horizontally, because I'm also gaining vertically, that extends my orbit a bit. And make sure that I hit here. Well, on the right side, after uh, this moon hopping mission, I at least have uh, gotten uh, sufficient practice landing and also docking, something I... I needed to do because it seemed like I was out of practice. Okay. Docking in particular. Okay, we don't need to rush things here. Let's see. Okay, now we're past the final little crater there and so we can just follow our retrograde vector now instead of being too careful still having trouble seeing how high the ground is here that's why I'm suddenly doing what I did there so I'll just call this final descent now yeah, I think the lunar surface... Oh, there's a shadow, I think. Uh, yeah, the lunar surface was playing tricks on me. I thought it was coming in way too fast. Okay, that's us touched down on our... our newest crater. Let's get the ladders down. Okay, so we've done this block, so let's do this block. Observe Mystery Goo. East Crater, okay. Usual less dense here, alright. Really would like better stuff for the Mystery Goo. I mean, the temperature, fine. Seismic data, minor quake again, okay. Okay, we've seen this before, and as usual, that can't be done. So, that's all of the science-y stuff. EVA, please. Okay, so Bill at the East Crater. Okay, three of four. Take surface sample. Breccia and melted materials. That's a slight difference from the previous, uh, the 
first one we did. EVA report. Dust is getting everywhere. 32 science. Good. Let's keep that data. Alright, so now we need to go off for our uh, rendezvous and then final crater. Okay, let's retract ladder now and let's see how far our companion has gotten. About the same sort of thing, so we, we can expect the same sort of ascent and rendezvous. No problems. Alright, uh, everything seems to be a go. So I need to make sure that my orbit actually intercepts the orbit of our target and that means actually aiming even a little bit more south than we are right now. You can see all I need to do is tilt the orbit downward so that it crosses the other orbit. And then by my preference I like to have the apoapsis at the descending node or ascending node. And that'll do. We'll try, let's see if, uh, it's still pretty far apart there, so let's just keep it in. That's fine orbit. So for going up and down on the moon, we tend to have about a hundred units of fuel left. But I think with Val, for instance, uh, this would be just right for Val. So, so I'm looking at that. Uh, Duna probably, probably also just about right. For Duna, I might have to add some sort of uh, drag shoot or something some way to uh, lessen the amount of delta V I need to come down though where I'd fit such a shoot I have no idea I mean I uh, could try and deploy these and repack them but that's always a dicey business uh, these aren't really meant for that purpose anyway Wow, already switching to target. Very ambitious. Alright. Alright, here we go again. Sometime or another I'm going to have to figure out how to uh, do something interesting with the docking and landing sequences so that I don't have to completely cut them out. Maybe do some sort of cin cinematic thing to make them somewhat interesting even though in this case I'm doing what three of them in the same episode on the case of landing. There's gotta be a way, right? Okay, so we seem to be aiming at its butt end here. So let's have it flip around. Okay, there we are. Still don't think I need to refill my monopropellant, so let's just continue. Actually, it's sort of a shame I don't have more science stuff on the lander because I think we have enough fuel to transfer to Minmus and just start doing Minmus as well. Uh, so, yeah. 
In fact, uh, later on, I think that I will do that. Obviously, the next mission is to Moho. But uh, I'll have to think about doing a Minmus mission as well. See? Well, I mean, uh, really, hitting... At, uh, well, it, it'll be so easy, though. I mean, after doing the moon, a Minmus is obviously going to be easier. So maybe I'll... For the sake of this uh, series, I'll skip that. It'd be something I'd do myself, but it wouldn't be very interesting. Okay, so I think this crater here, but I want to wait until it gets into uh, into daylight side. So let's actually make an orbit around the moon. A few orbits around the moon. The moon doesn't rotate quite as quickly as I'd like. So if the other two were twin craters, what the heck are these two? There's this. There's a. This is the polar one, isn't it? Yeah. But they seem to be connected by a crater as well, just like the twin craters were. One thing I have to assess, uh, going around one more, one more time, is we we seem to have ended up with a lot of monopropellants, haven't we? I mean, uh, all the docking and everything has not really used up much of our monopropellant at all, so we've got a surplus of monopropellants altogether. That's, that's mass that we could probably dump. Okay, I think uh, on this, I think this is properly lit now. So let's start making for landing. I I don't have to make a maneuver. I have to undock first. Okay, let's see. Uh, we are fully fueled there. Uh, how much exactly do we have of the mod propellant here? Uh, that's that tank. Uh, no, not the good container. The thing behind it. 64 is fine. I mean, heck, after uh, so that means about 12 units per uh, per docking something like that so so yeah I think we're good sun dock okay close up the hatch and now we can plot for our landing Yeah, that looks like the line that would uh, cut through the smoothest part of the crater there. Alright. SAS on, RCS off. And maneuver nodes that way. Okay, final landing. Ah, uh, well, I mean, final landing on the moon. I want a nice safe landing on Kerbin as well, but you know what I mean. Hopefully we will have brought back lots and lots of juicy science so that we can unlock some interesting new technologies. Actually, uh, considering I think I've gotten all the technologies that I actually wanted to get, uh, we'll be just trying to complete the tech tree. Uh, yeah. I think we've actually got more technology than I can ask for. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. I'll have to do one of those angular ones again because we are low and fast. And that's because our apoapsis is still on the, like, the other side of the planet. So let's bring the apoapsis to us. Maybe we can bring the orbit in a little bit. Okay, we're going up, we're going up. Let's not go up. Mm. See, like this. Looks good. I'm not being very uh, economical right now, obviously. The most economical way is just to follow a uh, retrograde vector down. And... Uh, well, that, that works just fine if you've uh, got your whole situation configured correctly and to your liking, but I don't. But actually right now I can probably just go ahead and do it. At least get a little bit closer to it. Ah, curve and rise. Of 
course, uh, probably not quite as dramatic as it would be if we were going faster than roughly 200 miles an hour. When the astronauts saw it around the moon, they would have been going, what, more than 3,000 miles an hour around the moon. Guess I'm landing around here. Or I'm falling like a rock right where I am. Something like that. Let's stop this, huh? Does not look like where I really wanted to land. Too close to the incline to this crater. But. Mm, tilt this way. I just want to get away from the crater. So. Okay, third landing. Ladders out. Not third landing, fourth landing. Wow. Okay, and our last goo container tells us this is the far side crater. Okay, 40 science. The temperature data, just usual stuff. Seismic data. Distant impacts, that one, 80 science. Gravity data. Interplay of gravity between Kerbin and the moon, all right, keep data. And of course, nothing there. All right, Bill, pop on out. This has been quite an epic trip for Bill. He's landed on the moon four times. Uh, more than half of the Apollo mission right here. <laughs> uh. Okay, Bill at the far side crater. I hope I've been putting 2014. Anyway. 4 of 4. I did it. Yes. Yes, you did. Okay, take the surface sample though. Melted byproducts here. Some appear to be formed by intense pressures and heat. Byproducts. I wonder what that means. I mean, uh, well, I don't know what the word means. I mean, byproducts of what exactly? Okay, uh, 120, and uh, the Searching the Sky for Kerbin one. All right, keep that data. All right, so yep, everything's done. The final rendezvous to dock. It's a good thing, actually. We, uh, we might not need a huge refueler for the for the tug because most of its fuel will still be there well, as we get back to uh, Kerbin's orbit. So so yeah, maybe I should use a smaller refueler because it's pretty much fueled up already. It's only got, uh, well I mean not fueled up, it's probably lost about half of its fuel on this mission. Alright, so where are we? It's a bit further ahead than before but that just means we'll have to go around a few more times to catch up with it. I'd rather not time warp to wait till it's in the right place or anything like that. That's something I rarely do anyway. Alright, so up we go. Let's 
get behind it so I know I'm not crashing into anything. Gear up. Need to set that as target. Inclination, still want to aim south. Uh, no, no, this is fine, actually. This will intercept it just fine. Okay, again, apoapsis at the ascending node. Correct the inclination first. And then orbit. We'll obviously be behind still, so no point trying to check that. Nice little curve in there. We are now going to be, after this docking, heading back home. And then we're going to have a, a new adventure to Moho in the next episode. Probably not with Bill. I think Bill has done his fill for now. Point 0.5 is fine. Okay, so 0.5 kilometer, hopefully, with a mere 12 meter per second burn. Twenty minutes. Okay, so where are we? Where oh where are where is our target? There it is. Alright. Okay, let's get the docking shield open. Very nice, and we can liberally approach to within 100 meters. Very good. Let's use RCS to slow down. Okay, looks like we're all lined up just fine. Pi. Coming into dock. Let's get the. Come on. There we are. Ooh, this is not my favorite view right now. Alright. Seem to have a lot of deviation. Okay, what's with this view? This view I don't like. Ah, there we go. Free view. Yes, I like free view. Alright, all connected up. Now, now I could dump the lander portion, right? Because there's, there's a decoupler here. And I could just dump this. I, I, I should probably... I should definitely transfer the fuel back up here. And it would be more efficient to do so. However, you'll notice that if we decouple it now, we're going to leave space junk in the orbit around the moon. And so I'd rather not do that. I'd rather get the entire pi lander portion in a suborbital trajectory at Kerbin. And in that way, the lander portion can be decoupled and it'll crash back down into Kerbin. Okay, so that's my plan. And... So it'll take a little bit more fuel to get back to Kerbin, but that's fine. We've got a lot of fuel. Not quite as efficient. We do have to get into orbit around Kerbin because the the Lambda 4 needs to remain in orbit. So we can't just head down any way we like. That's not a doable thing. And I would like to keep it in a reasonably high orbit actually. 
160 should be good. Okay. That way, uh, the next craft that it will tug can rendezvous with it easier, and also, whatever. Uh, well, also we might actually want to be higher than that, just because. Well, I'll I'll take a look. 160 will be fine. I'll do the planning for everything else later. Now, uh, very important. I need to shut this engine off. Uh, yes. Okay. And I absolutely do not want these to be decoupled. <laughs> Those are the actual engines of the of the Lambda Four. So, nope, don't want that decoupled. Now let's find our maneuver. And actually, I don't want the parachutes to deploy at the same time as this decoupling either. Always good to check your staging before your return. Okay, so 21 minutes of time warping. Okay, see you in uh, Kerbin Sphere of Influence. Okay, here we are on our way. Where's Kerbin? There's Kerbin. Okay, I should plot my orbital burn. That's close enough for me. Now it pretends my burn is going to be 33 seconds. Do I believe that? I don't know. But we can afford to get a little bit closer. Let's start burning around here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, three minutes. Look at that. Okay, hold that thought. I just realized that uh, because I'm going to be deorbiting the lander stage as well, the RCS here probably isn't going to be, well, may or may not be enough to deal with that. So I'm going to say reserve this fuel for the lander stage so that it'll be able to... Uh, do the orbit. So I'll let the lander stage handle the deorbit for this part, even though originally I was planning to use the RCS on this portion, but that was only if this portion didn't have the lander as well. It is a lot of Delta V to get into orbit around Kerbin. I could have air braked, of course, but, uh, but yeah, I didn't. Should think about that on returning from uh, Moho, though. Probably we'll need to air brake rather than do this particular burn. But air braking has to be done very carefully because if I air brake too deep, the rockets will not be able to rescue me. They are not powerful enough. And again, this portion has no parachutes. It has no ability to survive, so... Poor old uh, Bob Kerman will, uh, it is Bob, right? I always forget which one I put in which, darn it. It is Bob, yeah. Uh, Bob Kerman will then perish, so no good doing that. It looks like with the refueling mission, I'll have to carry a bunch of fuel, probably the uh, three tanks, these three tanks worth, but I won't have to carry up the RCS tank. Okay, we're uh, a little bit of an imbalanced orbit here. We've got 140 by 200. I think I'm just got to keep it there. 
All right, like I said, I'm going to... Now I can unlock this one, but I'm going to be transferring it out. Um, yeah, back to the lander stage. And that should be more than enough to bring us back down to Kerbin. Okay. I didn't really deplete any monopropellant from this part, part, so there's no way I can move monopropellant back up. And that's that. So let's just, uh, I guess we can try to land as close to KSC as possible. So we'll wait till the KSC is on the bright side. At least we're above 120 here. But we are not above 240. So time warp is still limited. So I'll uh, pause recording and continue with this once I've got the KSC on the bright side. Okay, I just realized we're in a pretty inclined orbit. So maybe I want to fix that. I need to target this. And yeah, 15.9 degrees is pretty rough. So before I even consider landing, let me... Well, you know, it'd be better to uh, do this without the the lander craft attached. So I'll have to remember to adjust. Well, actually, maybe it'll be more interesting to leave it in inclination and uh, show how we do that. But then that wouldn't be very efficient, would it? Yeah. So um, yeah, after I bring the lander craft down, the next episode I'll try to remember to uh, adjust the inclination of the lander four before I send a mission up to it. If I don't, well. Uh, hilarity will ensue you know how that is so so yeah I think we are relatively bright on the KSC thing obviously we're not gonna be hitting the KSC with the lander and I, I don't think I was going to be able to do that anyway so so we're just gonna bring it down in the ocean safely hopefully not too many parts will break off uh, yeah that looks fine. Looks like it'll be a clear descent like that. Oh, why am I plotting it now? I don't need to because we haven't detached yet. All right, so say bye-bye to uh, Bob Bill and Bill Bob. Off we go. Um, on dock. Okay, now we can activate this rocket. And... Uh, for a little bit of it, I should just watch, just to make sure nothing crazy happens here. Yeah, we'll be fine. That should be enough. Any fine adjustments can be handled with RCS, I think. So uh, this is now officially re-entering, so that should be good. Yep, uh, I think I can decouple that now. Pretty uh, steep descent though, I have to say. Definitely not something I would try with uh, deadly re-entry. This is... Uh, inadvisable descent for that sort of thing but let's just get this oriented like this we really don't have much reaction wheel power once um, I don't know how much reaction wheel power do we have oh uh, electric charge seems to be a thing all right uh, let's transfer some electric charge to the capsule up here
Well, it was. Uh, I don't think we had a spare reaction wheel on here, so I think it was enough reaction wheel. Ah, uh, one thing that's going to happen. I should warn you, the lights are on the lander stage. So this is going to go dark except for this little green light. So no more illumination, folks. But the sun is coming out, so... So hopefully we will be saved by that. Yeah, the, the top portion does not have any lights. Sorry. Okay, uh, with that... Yeah, let's decouple. Uh, oh, I, I just uh, pressed the space bar and heard a decoupling sound, but I don't know what decoupled. <laughs> okay, there we go. That decouple. Yes, that's what I wanted. Alright. Parachutes. Very important now. And... Yep, let's time warp. Okay, here we go. Okay, well, enough reaction willpower to get this mobile without turning on the RCS. That's good. And that's really all we needed. All our science, our dear Kerbal, all packed into this little pod here, very neatly. Okay, I think I might want to slow down more than that, so let me turn on RCS and uh, give us some... Uh, is that the right way to go? Yeah, that is the right way to go. Is it? Mm. Okay, now I'm confused. Okay, I think this is the right way to go. There we go. Yes, yes. What am I thinking? Uh, early morning, something or another. Okay, I will deploy parachutes now. Yes. Very good. SAS off. I guess, uh, well, let me just try and use RCS to continue our... Might as well make this as light as possible and just dump the RCS as necessary. Okay, RCS off. Alright, the parachute's open. Didn't really give me a sound effect this time, or at least I didn't hear it. Uh, alright. So everything looks good. It's time warp to Splashdown. Okay, very nice. The... The goo containers sort of acting like flotation devices. Let's recover the vessel. And there you have it. A successful mission to the moon to land in four craters. And you can see the EVA reports, surface sample crew report, everything add up to 1,561 science points. And uh, all in preparation for a hopefully more ambitious and lucrative mission to MOHO. But uh, before we get to that, let's, let's spend all these science points and see how far in our tech tree it gets us. So this is the current state of our tech tree, and I guess I'll just... Uh, open them in order now. Um, I don't really need unmanned tech but I'll go with that. Ion propulsion, fine. And then these are all 550 signs so we only get to open one of these. Uh, what's this? Oh that's another probe thing. Oh whatever. Uh, oh the RTGs would be good. Just cause. Um, it's really the rapiers or the RTGs. I haven't done any aircraft stuff in this. I guess maybe I should just keep it that way. I've got other things, uh, other series where I do aircraft stuff, so it's not exactly the most uh, 
Probably a bad idea to put the arrow spikes in the same level as the rapiers. I guess the arrow spikes are slightly more. Yeah, the, the, I guess that's alright. Anyway, uh, that's a neither here nor there. Let's get the RTGs, because uh, those are always useful. Alright, so uh, Moho next time, and maybe we'll get to unlock uh, two more of these sciences. And then what I'm thinking is, well, we've uh, sort of swung by Eve. We've swung by Duna. We've landed on Duna, though we need to recover Jeb again. Uh, I sort of intentionally left him there. Um, of course, we had landed on Ike as well. Uh, we never landed on Eve, but we did land on Gilly. Um, so we visited Eve, we visited Duna, we visited Drez, we visited Jewel. Um, so after we visit Moho, the only planet we haven't visited is Elu. So I guess the logical thing would be send a mission to Moho, and then after that send a mission to Elu. Uh, and then uh, and bring Jeb back. Uh, so I guess that's, that's the sum total of what I uh, expect to do to complete the tech tree. Maybe that'll be enough points, maybe that won't. We'll see. Uh, but that's my plan, so uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.